Hello everyone. Uh, we're going to continue our explorations uh, of uh, tessellations and I'm just going to remind you uh, what we have done so far. Uh, we studied uh, regular tessellations and we understood uh, how they work and why they work as they do and why there are only one, two, three types of regular tessellations. And today we're going to explore what is known as semi-regular tessellations. Uh, they're also known as Archimedean tessellations to honor the mathematician Archimedes who studied them. Uh, and uh, basically the idea here, um, in the case of uh, regular uh, tessellations, you will recall you're only allowed to use one type of polygon at a time. And in the case of the semi-regular, we'll be able to uh, use a composition of types. So it doesn't have to be just hexagons, just triangles, but it could be an octagon and a square, etc. Now, one thing very important about semi-regular tessellations, this is something that uh, people often get confused, is in addition to uh, using uh, a variety of uh, polygons, uh, another requirement of uh, the definition of semi-regular tessellations is everything should look identical from a vertex. So if you could imagine yourself to be a little ant, uh, you know, situated on a point, uh, for example, here, and you look at the vicinity, everything should look identical if you move to another vertex and look at the world that way. Uh, so uh, here the ant would notice, oh, there is a, you know, purple hexagon, purple hexagon, two triangles. But then if you bring the ant here, going to notice the same thing. Oh, there's two triangles, uh, purple hexagon, purple hexagon, etc. Okay. Now it turns out that there are only eight uh, semi-regular tessellations. You see them here. Uh, it is a fascinating mathematical number theoretical uh, exercise, uh, not unlike the exploration we have done here. Sort of, it's sort of a uh, divisibility by uh, into um, a 360 requirement. But now things are a little bit complicated because you have a variety of uh, polygons and their separate uh, interior angles coming into play. So we're not going to discuss that. That's a fascinating uh, math uh, project to undertake for maybe a semester project. But what I want to do with you is let's create maybe one of these uh, shapes together. Uh, and that will give you some idea how this works. Uh, I really like uh, this one. Uh, this shape is easy to do. So let's actually do that one together. So I'm going to open a blank page. Um, let us create a blank page and uh, remember how this was created. It has an octagon and then a square uh, and an octagon, etc. Okay, so we're going to basically need to utilize octagon tool together with the uh, square tool. Now, uh, let's grab the octagon tool. It goes from left to right and it opens this way. And then uh, let us use our square tool right here. Okay. And then let us use our octagon tool again. Again, the direction might be potentially confusing how things are going to open, but just uh, keep at it. Uh, as you notice, I couldn't land it, so I'm going to try it again. So here is one, here's another one. And then uh, here is the last one that uh, should close it off. Okay. Um, so here is a uh, an Archimedean tessellation, a semi-regular tessellation. Uh, to understand things a little bit, so you understand why they work, I'm just gonna copy and paste. Okay. So let's understand a couple of things. So observe, if I focus on a point, something like that, uh, you're going to notice that you have two octagons. So let's remember, uh, and let me do a little bit of tallying here. 
Uh, one interior angle is 135 for a regular um, octagon. And observe around that point I have two of those. I have 135, another 135. And then the square has an uh, interior angle of 90. And observe when you add them, it creates 360, which tells you that it is possible to uh, tile the vicinity of a point with two octagons and uh, and a uh, square. So this gives you an idea how you would uh, start setting up some equations. You would say, I need to have a polygon of one type and then however many of the other type I need. Uh, most of these you could sort of discover by trial and error, but uh, it is quite uh, a complicated computation to figure out uh, which ones will work. Now uh, let's actually make this even more than what I have here. So you could just keep building here. Uh, so I'm just going to keep tiling as much as I can in every direction uh, as much as I can. And you're going to notice soon uh, you're going to get a uh, quite beautiful looking uh, tessellation that uses only uh, the octagon and the uh, square. So here I'm just going to go maybe uh, maybe one more uh, and then we're done. Okay, so you get the idea here uh, and it's important when you're doing these uh, constructs to make sure that everything locks properly otherwise uh, things may not be properly constructed. Okay, now if you think cleverly, which I'm not going to try to do it here, uh, you could in theory turn things, uh, something like that, into a tool that you could uh, actually use to uh, rapidly uh, cover the space, the plane, with many of these. But uh, that's really not our intention. So it might be a fun exercise for you to uh, see which of these uh, you can uh, do. Uh, I absolutely love this one. Uh, I absolutely love this and that. Uh, this is a little bit of a brain twister for me. This is the one that uh, was when I was trying to discover these on my own. Uh, I just couldn't uh, quite guess this uh, twisted triangular structure here. This was a surprise for me. Uh, this one I think you'll be able to get quickly. It uses dodecagons and triangles. Uh, this one is kind of like a bunch of houses and upside down houses put together. This one is not too hard. This one is not too hard. But I absolutely love uh, this one, this one, and that one, and this one we just did. Okay? So, uh, I hope you had some insights. Uh, uh, the beauty of Sketchpad is you could really go and have a great time with these. Sometimes, sometimes, and actually let me uh, end with that thought. Sometimes, let's just open a blank page here. Sometimes in Geometry Sketchpad, uh, you can uh, make accidental discoveries. And these discoveries themselves um, will lead to some interesting mathematics. So here is actually a discovery a student of mine did. Uh, he was trying to understand if uh, it's possible to have uh, Archimedean tessellations using pentagons. So you can see that you can put a bunch of these guys together like that. And he realized that it is possible to... Uh, create a ring-like structure. Uh, we name these rings after him. Uh, we call them Diaz rings. His name was Tony Diaz. Uh, and what the Diaz rings allow you to do is uh, create a structure that actually looks like it should be one of the Archimedean tessellations. And the reason we are hopeful is you can see that this interior thing here, you have 10 of these uh, pentagons getting together. So you know that you should be able to create a, pent a, a decagon inside. So, so far, uh, in addition to looking like a pretty uh, sunflower, this looks like it should be one of these uh, 
semi-regular tessellations, but what you're going to notice is if you try to create this on the other side, so if you try to start this process again, there's no way to, uh, to replicate that process. So let me show you why it wouldn't work. Uh, now I'm going to take another one of these, okay? But observe uh, what I need to do, obviously, is use uh, pentagons to continue. And you can see already that this is going to fail. Why? Because look at this space here. There's no way to have uh, any regular polygon fit in there. So uh, this was a very close call. So the student was doing an exploration in uh, the Jamra sketchpad uh, and accidentally discovered something that uh, is not a... Uh, uh, semi-regular tessellation uh, but it is pretty indeed and this actually this example gives you a good sense of uh, close calls meaning uh, this almost was a semi-regular tessellation but you're gonna notice there's no way to fill these gaps with any kind of a regular polygon uh, the student's work actually became a paper that we uh, created, we wrote, uh, and there is some beautiful uh, number theoretical mathematics behind uh, the, uh, these Diaz rings. Uh, one question uh, that was definitely interesting to ask is, uh, if you have, a, in this case, a five-sided polygon, uh, how do you understand how many of those do you need to close this shape into a ring? Let me just get rid of this part so you can see it better. So the question is, how do you relate the number of pentagons you need to close it to become a ring? And in this case, uh, you can see that you need 10 of them. Uh, so you immediately might have a conjecture, oh, let's just double the number of size to get the number of them to close. So that was uh, actually how we started writing that paper, uh, doing that research. Uh, we realized that there has to be some kind of a uh, pattern, some kind of an intelligent uh, um, procedure that tells you how the number of size of the polygon you're using and the number of them do you need to close to a ring. So here is uh, something that was an interesting discovery. Uh, these are called Diaz uh, rings, named after student uh, Diaz, uh, Tony Diaz. Alrighty, I hope you had a good time and you had some insights. Uh, you have some now research possibilities. Uh, please let me know if you discover some cool things. Uh, it'll be fun to see where you can take this work. Alrighty, have a great day. Bye.